There is no indisputable proof for the Big Bang, says author Robert Sawyer, and there is none for evolution. And yet you accept those. Why hold the question of whether there is a creator to a higher standard? Macroevolution is glorified in the academic sphere as an explanation for where we all came from. And yet, just like Sawyer said, there is no indisputable proof that proves macroevolution explains where we came from. I have done much research on this topic and have watched many scientific documentaries of scientists arguing the points of intelligent design versus macroevolution. And um, I've done a lot of research and reports for school along these lines over the last 10 years. So I'm well versed in this topic as well as the arguments within it. There are two groups of people. The first group believes that an intelligent designer had to do with the formation of the earth and why we are all here. And the second group does not believe that. And hopefully after I share with you the proofs for intelligent design, you will be pressed to go back and examine the evidence and have the courage to go where the evidence leads. So today I'm going to share with you some evidence for intelligent design in the areas of biology and cosmology, as well as the lack of evidence for macroevolution. Beginning in biology, we're going to first look at DNA. Lee Strobel was a former editor for the Chicago Tribune and also author of The Case for the Creator. And he says, we have discovered in the last 50 years that every one of our bodies, 100 trillion strands, has DNA, um, the strands of DNA that if you were to stretch it out, it would be six feet long. It's encoded with a six character chemical alphabet that spells out the precise assembly instructions for all the thousands of different kinds of proteins in our body. Wow, that's a lot of information. He also goes on to say that nature can produce patterns, but it can't produce information. DNA is the most efficient information storage system in the universe. So if you're walking along the beach and you see ripples on the sand, you're automatically gonna think the ocean created the ripples in the sand because nature produces pattern. But if you saw a big heart with Harry Loves Christie in it, you wouldn't think that the ocean did that, you would think an intelligent person drew that, probably Harry or Christy, and um, that's because nature doesn't produce information, it produces patterns. Um, moving into another area of biology, the bacterial flagellum. Um, a flagellum is a kind of motor on the backs of some bacteria that propels it forwards and backwards and right and left, and it all does it, it does it all at a rate of 10,000 RPMs and it can stop at a quarter turn and go the opposite direction at 10,000 RPM still. And it's only one 100,000th of an inch long. In Evolution News and Views, they write that Professor Michael Behe, a biochemist who did a lot of research into the bacterial flagellum, his argument for the flagellum being proof for intelligent design has not been refuted to date. Moving into the area of cosmology, um, evidence found there that supports intelligent design. Um, Dr. Walter Bradley wrote a paper that lists some of the framework for a place that is suitable for human life and other complex organisms. And he says that this place must have carbon, a universal connector essential for the molecules of life. He also says it must have a stable source of energy and it should sustain the living organisms um, through this energy but not give too much or too little energy. And our sun does this because if we were just a few feet further from the sun or a few feet closer to the sun, we would either burn up or freeze and be, this place would be uninhabitable for life. In another way, um, we have to have just the right amount of radioactive elements for plate tectonics because without plate tectonics, the earth would be a perfect sphere with water covered and there would be no land mass pushed up to support life that breathes there. And when we look at the evidence against macroevolution or the lack of evidence to support it, um, you can look and see that it's not observable now. If this is a process that happened over millions and billions of years, we should be able to see some proof, something transitioning right now, but there's no proof right now. And it's not observable from the past because the missing, fo the missing fossil record is still missing. And so, as far as we know, in the past, evolution has not happened. And we will not be able to observe it in the future because of the second law of thermodynamics and the concept of entropy. Entropy is a 
measure of disorder for an isolated system, and the second law of thermodynamics states that the entropy of an isolated system will never decrease. So, in other words, a system cannot spontaneously progress from disorder to order. So to see macro evolution in the future, it would violate this established scientific law. So all in all, evolution requires great faith to believe, and it can be considered a religion. So there are a lot of things to consider when looking at intelligent design, the evidence found in biology and cosmology, as well as the lack of evidence for macro evolution. And I do believe the evidence points towards intelligent design. So to close this out, Lee Strobel writes, one teaspoon of pure DNA can hold all the assembly instructions for every protein and all of the 1,000 million species of animals that have ever existed in the planet and have been left over for all the information of every book ever published. Where does this written information come from? I think it most logically points towards the existence of an intelligent designer. And I would have to agree with Lee Strobel and encourage you to look into the evidence I presented and um, have the courage to go where the evidence